Hey guys, let's check out and see what Google is saying about Java. All right, so I did a search for Java. So we'll see what the Google says. What is Java used for? Java is one of the most widely used programming languages. Java is used as a server-side language for most back-end development projects, including those involving big data and Android development. Java is also commonly used for desktop computing, other mobile computing games, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, okay, that's true. Is Java a dead programming language? We'll see what that says. Java has been on the decline for a number of years. If you look at the Tai Obi Index, which we will in a second, from the mid to late part of this decade, it has been losing percentage points. From May 2016 to 20, from excuse me, from May 2016 to May 2017, for example, the language declined six percent. This indicates that it is losing mind share to other languages. That pop-up was really getting my goat. Anyway, let's check out the Tayobi Index for uh, March 2021. Let me zoom in on this one here. All right, so we see uh, Java, yeah, it's down a little bit. That was down, it's still number two. <laughs> so it was number one, went down to number two. Uh, but, you know, C is number one. This is just one index. There are many indexes out there, by the way. So don't let this index be the only one you figure, oh, it's relevant. One of the things you got to look at is job opportunities, how many Java jobs there are. I think ultimately that's the most important thing. Um, where does Tayobi get the data? This video is sponsored by Tab9. Tab9 is an AI code completion plugin, helps developers code smarter and faster, supports most languages and IDEs. As you guys know, code completion is one of the key technologies that developers should use. That means using an IDE and using code completions. And now with AI powered code completing software like Tab9, it takes it to a whole new level. So why do you want to code complete? You're going to code faster. You're going to code cleaner because it completes your code. So you have less bugs, less typos, and you don't need to remember all the different methods and libraries and packages in the language that you happen to be using because the code completion, especially AI based ones like Tab9 will help you get there much more quickly. Tab9 is trained on OpenAI GPT-2 neural network, so it knows human common knowledge such as the months of the year and their order. It practically predicts the exact code that a developer was about to type and gets better as you use it. Tab9 has a free forever basic plan. The pro plan offers external GPU power and therefore provides better predictions. That's the cool thing about AI-based software in that it improves over time on its own, whereas non-AI-based software, traditional software, the developer has to actually do the work to improve the quality of the product. So with Tab9, you have the power of code completion injected into your uh, favorite IDE. So you notice that Tab9 supports AI code completion, JavaScript, Python, TypeScript, PHP, Java, C++, Go, Rust. So covering a wide range of languages. In fact, Tab9 supports just about every modern programming language used today. Take a look at tab nine. The link is below. Very cool stuff. The Tayobi Programming Community Index is an indicator of the popularity of programming languages. The index is updated once a month. The ratings are based on a number of skilled engineers worldwide, courses, and third-party vendors. Uh, popular search engines such as Google, Bing, Yahoo, no, let's get Google, Wikipedia, Amazon, YouTube, Baidu are used to calculate the ratings. It is important to note that the Tayobi index is not about the best programming language or the language is most, in, excuse me, or the language in which most lines of code have been written. The index can be used to check whether your programming skills are still up to date or to make a strategic decision about what programming language you should adopt starting to build new software systems. The, de 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 excuse me, the definition of the Tai OB index can be found here. I don't quite agree with all that. What you're going to see here in this top 10 is usually the same cast of characters, usually the same languages 
that are uh, always in the top 10. So you got C, Java's number two here. Another list, you'll see Java's number one. Then it's Python, uh, C++, C Sharp, Visual Basic, Visual, ba Visual Basic, that surprises me. JavaScript, PHP, dirty old PHP, Assembly's gone up, wow, that's interesting. SQL, that's not necessarily a programming language, it's a database language. But scroll down, scroll down, classic Visual, oh, Ruby. Ruby's at number 16, Swift way down there. Uh, Perl, even Perl. So let's look at these languages. Now that statement they made, which I uh, have a little problem with. Um, the index can be used to check whether your program skills are still up to date or make strategic decisions about what language you should adopt when starting to build a new system. Um, yeah, that's kind of, because mm, look, C, Java, Python, C++, C Sharp, Visual Basic, JavaScript, PHP, they have been in the top 10 forever. And I don't think that's going to be changing much. Yes, they'll flow in and out. Some lists will show Python's number one. Some lists will show JavaScript is number one or number two. They're always good. If you're doing any of these, which assembly is surprising me, any of these top 10, you're probably in a good position. But I say probably because there's other indicators we can look at. So let's take a look at Indeed.com. So I typed in Java Developers, New York, New York. Again, as I said many times, where you happen to be in the world will affect and impact in terms of job availabilities. In Germany, for example, as far as I understand, .NET, C Sharp, very popular. If you go to San Francisco, you might have, find two or three Ruby programmers there. Um, it depends what, where you are. But let's look at New York as an example. So uh, Java developer, well, first of all, how many jobs are there in New York? 2,465 jobs listed in just uh, New York, New York, one city. Uh, not bad, not bad. Do they list salaries? $90 an hour, which is equivalent of 180 k a year. If you want to figure out how much per hour adds to yearly, assuming eight-hour days, five days a week, you just multiply it by 1,000 times two, so $180,000 a year if you were working full-time there. Uh, this one, 90 to $100,000 a year. So that's why oftentimes it's a good idea to do uh, contracting work where they pay you 90 bucks the hour. They may only keep you on for six months, but you've just made a year's worth of salary, you know, which you would have got paid elsewhere. So again, it really depends. Everything's negotiable and circumstantial, but yeah, keep it in mind, a little tip there. See, this is very low. This is very low. Of course, they're asking for HTML, CSS, AWS, JavaScript, Node. That is still low, especially in New York. I find that low. See here, look at it. Same <laughs> Java eight eight five eight point eight year Java eight five years experience or more. The salary starts to jump up. When you're thinking about programming languages, I would suggest that you don't chase a particular language because of a salary listing that you see. All of the major languages. When you have just a few years of experience under your belt, the salaries kind of even out. I've done this in other videos. So I would pick your language based on the type of programming you want to do. And I would pick your language based on uh, your location. But anyway, that's another video. So let's go back to it. What else do we have here? So we got the uh, Indeed in New York. Let's say Indeed in, uh, we'll say Florida, since everybody's moving to Florida. Uh, Florida... Um, I don't know, uh, Florida City, Florida Keys. How about Florida? Okay, we're gonna go Miami, Florida. Miami, Florida, there we go. Uh, let me hit the, the find button here. 194 jobs in Miami, Florida. This is on the low end though. But of course, cost of living is much lower there. See, 130 to 200,000 a year. Uh, life coaching matching services match prospective clients with life coaches. That's okay. How's that Java? That's weird. I guess it's, that's the company. Uh, yeah, full stack engineer. So yeah, look at that. Up to 200 grand a year in Florida, which is probably really good. Uh, let's try, I don't know, we'll stay Boston. See how Boston, Massachusetts. Uh, yeah, so 1,475 jobs, a lot of jobs there. Full stack, full stack, senior Java developer, senior Java engineer, 
Senior your fold stack. So not bad, not bad. We could go on and on and on, but I don't want to bore you guys. So how are we doing here for time? All right, so let's go check out Google Trends, uh, everybody's favorite. So I've looked at the past 12 months. I got Java, Blue, C Sharp, and Red, PHP, and Yellow, Python, and Green. So this is a relative uh, searches. You can see the uh, Python and the Java are way up there with Python having a slight lead in the last uh, 12 months. Uh, so that's pretty interesting. Whereas uh, C Sharp is actually falling below PHP. 30 old PHP is doing good. So let's go back, let's say five years. Did I just do five years? I don't know. Here's five years. So five years, you see the big rise in green of Python. Java slight falling down here, but Python and Java kind of neck and neck, so we know that. So let's go back just to see what the long-term trend is going back 8,000 years from 2004. And you see, yeah, Java used to be woo, way up there, uh, along with PHP, strangely enough, and it's kind of dropped. Uh, they all kind of evened out. This is Google Trends. It's not an exact indicator as to... Uh, popularity and so forth. It just tells you what people are searching for on Google. It's interesting. Interest, in, interest for Java It's Bangladesh, Nigeria, Indonesia, Brazil, Mexico. Huh. So all these regions, Peru, India, Colombia. That's interesting. Wow, I found that interesting. Blue. Uh, so you see in the United States, 44% Java, 13% C Sharp, 12% uh, PHP, and 31% Python. And let's go to Nigeria. As an example, you see the search results there. So there you go. Regions do have an impact in terms of uh, searches and popularity. Let's go back here again. Uh, do you still need Java? At one time, Java was absolutely, ne absolutely necessary if you wanted to be able to use your computer for, well, just about everything. Today, it is less there is a less need for it. What is this guy saying? A growing number of security experts re recommend not installing Java if you don't already have it. Hmm. Okay. Uh, just a little explanation there. Java can be run on your home computer and it can be run on servers. Most of the time, people run Java on the servers for web application development. And the other place you see Java, of course, is on Android devices. On your home computers, do you really need Java? Probably not, unless you have a, an application written in Java. So I would agree with that statement. You don't need to install Java. Back in the day, we used to always install Java. I was like, oh yeah, install Java. Not anymore. Not anymore. Who uses Java? That's interesting. 9,611 companies reportedly use Java in their tech stacks, including Uber, Airbnb, and Google's. So you got Uber, Airbnb, Google, Netflix, Pinterest, Instagram, Spotify, Amazon, uh, yeah, and many, many others. So yeah, so there you go. That's who uses Java. I know LinkedIn is, I believe, Java-based. Is Python better than Java? Silly question, but I will, I will look at it. Java and Python both have been at war for the top spot. Python has been constantly improving, while Java is used in significant organizations. There's no one better. It really depends on the type of work that you're doing. Is Java dead now? Yes, Java is completely dead. It is, it is as dead as the most popular language world can be anyway. Java is completely obsolete, which is why Android is moving from their sort of Java to full-blown open GTK. And about that one, that's Quora. No, Java is not dead. Java is slowly losing popularity. But in 20 years, there will be Java jobs. You'll be gar guaranteed that. Language of the year. December sees Java's declining popularity by 4.72%. This is in December 2020. This article was written here. And uh, Python was up by 1.9%. Okay, next. Let's go on. Uh, does Google use Java? Well, yeah, we saw it does. Uh, is Java front-end or back-end? Front-end is referred to as client-side as opposed to back-end, which is basically server-side applications. The, essential, the essentials of back-end web development include languages such as Java, Ruby, Python, PHP, .NET, etc. Most common front-end languages are HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. That's true. So is Java front-end or back -end? Yeah, it's both. But most of the time, if you're writing Java, it's either Android or it's back-end server stuff for large organizations. Android, of course, is pivoting more to Kotlin these days. 
does Windows 10 need Java? You only need Java if the app requires it, as I said before. Okay, we got that. What is the full form? I don't know what that is. What is called Java? What is Java written in? It's uh, C++. Uh, the very first compiler developed by Sun Microsystems, this is the original company that actually created Java, was written in C using some libraries in C++. Today, Java compiler is written in Java, while the JRE is written in C. Huh, interesting. All right. Yeah, a lot of Java is written in Java these days. Does Java have a future? Yeah, it does. Can Python replace Java? No, it's being used, but I don't think so. Python continues to rise on the list of popular languages, programming languages in the world. According to the TIOB index analyst, rather, uh, with this rate, Python could overtake C and Java and become the most popular programming language. This is in June 11, 2019. Well, apparently it did. Is Java good for backhand? It is. Why is Java so important? Uh, we'll see what they have to say. I'll give you my answer. Java can be used to create complete applications that run on a single computer or be distributed across servers and clients in a network. As a result, you can use it to easily build mobile applications, run or run on a desktop application that uses different operating systems and servers. Linux. Yeah, that was the reason they advertised, but I can tell you, I was around during the rise of Java back in the day. Java really, yeah, it'd be, that promise of right, right ones run everywhere. Because Java, basically, when you write Java code, it sits inside a program called the JVM, and then it translates all it translates all that Java code into another language. Well, I'm skipping a step, but anyway, it translates the Java essentially so that it can you can install, write your Java program, and it will work on Mac, and it will work on Windows, and it will work on Linux, etc. The problem is the vast majority of that Java programming was server side and on Unix machines or Linux machines. And that's where most of it is, uh, until Android, of course. So um, Java is basically big today because it was adopted by lots and lots of organizations back in the day because it had a lot of advantages relative to its competitors. And um, there you go. That's why. So the run, the right once and run everywhere thing was this marketing tool at the end of the day. Well, it was functional, but... The reality is it just got ad ad adapted because it had a lot of other good qualities about Java. Why is Java so hard? But is Java hard to learn? The simple answer is yes, so they say. It can be tricky. As you learn Java programming, you encounter some simple concepts like variables and functions, like any programming language. But there are also more abstract, complex ones like objects, bringing inheritance, polymorphism that can be difficult to understand. Well, I just take one of my courses, you'll be fine. Uh, which pays more, Java or Python? Besides nowadays, uh, artificial intelligence, automation-related jobs are more in the market, thus preferring Python over Java is more. Well, again, it's as I said, it comes down to your level of skill at the end of the day and a little bit of experience. Should you learn Java in 2021? Uh, there are numerous reasons why Java continues to be a leader in the world of development and why it's still a language worth learning 2020. Its syntax is also very similar to English, which makes it less complicated to understand and write when compared to less straightforward programming languages. All right. Uh, I don't know the sense. We'll find out. Facebook uses several languages for its different services. PHP is used for the front end. Erlang is used for chat. Java and C++ are used for several, in several places and perhaps other languages as well. Facebook has made thrift open source and support for even more languages has been added. All right. I think that's good. So short answer. Uh, Java is still very popular today. Uh, it's used all over the place. I personally would not be using Java for short-term application development, uh, excuse me, for new application development for startups. Uh, for Android development, I'd probably be leaning towards Kotlin since uh, Google said use Kotlin uh, in 2020, I think they did. So it probably makes sense to listen to what Google says in that regard. And uh, there you go. I hope you found this video useful. Now you know what Google is saying about uh, Java. Of course, the title uh, suggested that Google is actually making an official statement. I was being a little bit facetious there, if that's the right word. Anyway. You'll see what's going on. We'll talk soon. Bye.